Hello and welcome to the Memory Card. Last week we started Zelda Month by talking about the game that made me the Zelda fan that I am today. So today we're going to be continuing this celebration of the Legend of Zelda series by talking about the first 3D Zelda game that I ever played and the first Zelda game that I bought new. So today we're going to be talking about Twilight Princess HD for the Nintendo Wii U. Twilight Princess HD came out in 2016 for the Nintendo Wii U, but the game originally was released in 2006 for the Nintendo Wii and the GameCube. This was the swan song for the GameCube and the triumphant beginning of the Nintendo Wii's lifespan, but this game also feels like a knee-jerk reaction to the idiotic outcries people had over the Wind Waker before its release. Fans and some critics claimed that they wanted a more dark and serious Zelda game with more dungeons, so Nintendo obliged them. One thing that always annoys me is when people just parrot that they want dark games or dark media in general like it's the 90s again and everything has to be dark and edgy and that will somehow make it better. But thankfully, Twilight Princess takes its darker and more moody tones in smart ways that doesn't really detract from the experience for the most part. However, the direction Nintendo took with Twilight Princess has helped make it a game that just doesn't really have the same appeal to me in the same way that Wind Waker, Ocarina of Time, or Majora's Mask does. Not to say it's a bad game at all, because it isn't. Twilight Princess had elements of the 3D Zelda games before it, which in some ways makes it feel like a bit of a best of for the 3D Zelda games. It has a darker tone similar to Majora's Mask, and it took the advancements to combat from the Wind Waker and added even more to it with special moves you could learn throughout the game. It also continues to use Ocarina of Time as its general blueprint. It also has an even heavier focus on frequent dungeons like A Link to the Past does, so there's even a bit of 2D Zelda there in its design. All of this makes Twilight Princess a content-rich and encyclopedic entry in the Zelda franchise. One other interesting detail is that this was the first Zelda game where Link could swing his sword while moving and introduced horseback combat. Now, sword swinging while moving does sound trivial, but it is a fun addition, and it's something you notice with Twilight Princess. Fighting from horseback is a lot of fun, and it was something Nintendo wanted to do in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, but due to engine limitations, they weren't able to do that. Although one major problem with the controls on horseback is that they feel just as clunky as they did in Ocarina of Time. Trying to have Epona jump a fence in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, or Twilight Princess never ceases to drive me crazy. You have to have it lined up exactly perfect or it just does not work. It's about as hard as trying to climb a ladder or go through a door in Grand Theft Auto 4 or Red Dead Redemption. Twilight Princess is somewhat frustrating for me because in a lot of ways it's a fantastic game that does a lot of things extremely well but I just don't enjoy the world, narrative, or even most of the characters as much as I do in other Zelda games. But let's start with the many things that Twilight Princess does very well. Midna is amazing, and easily my favorite guide character in any Zelda game to date. Her personality is engrossing, and her arc is very compelling. She's the most interesting and dynamic guide character in the franchise. But this is taken to the degree where even though you play as Link, and you're the one fighting bosses and solving the puzzles in dungeons? Link doesn't feel like the protagonist of this story. Midna does. Now this isn't necessarily a problem, the Mad Max movies are able to make this kind of motif work extremely well, but Link is very uninteresting in comparison to his portrayal in The Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, or Breath of the Wild. Anyway, back to the good things. As is expected in a Zelda game, the music is phenomenal, this rendition of the Hyrule Field theme and the music for the title screen is hauntingly beautiful. The soundtrack would have benefited from the expression that orchestration could have brought out of the music, but even in its MIDI format, the music still sounds great. The dungeons are also very well designed, with puzzles that definitely stumped me from time to time. One puzzle that actually wasn't hard but stumped me for some reason during my first full playthrough of the game was with the boomerang in the first dungeon. It even has the pattern on the ground, and you're supposed to throw the boomerang in that pattern. But when I was playing that section of the game for the first time with someone else, I we both studied the puzzle for about 15 minutes, and we somehow never noticed that pattern on the ground. 
and actually looked up the puzzle and felt like idiots when it told us to just look at the ground. There are also some really cool items in the game that Link gets to use in Twilight Princess. The Gale Boomerang adds an interesting dynamic with the wind it generates to the awesome boomerang from the Wind Waker. The ball and chain is ridiculous but so much fun to use, and smashing ice with the ball and chain does not get old for me. The Double Claw Shot is also easily my favorite version of the Hook Shot, which is probably the coolest item in any Zelda game. I mean, you get a grappling hook like Batman, how could that not be awesome? And the spinner is also really fun, and leads to some really cool puzzle design, but it's sorely underutilized, and the same goes for the Dominion Rod. Playing as Wolf Link is also really fun, and changes things up in interesting ways with your movement in combat. Although combat as Wolf Link does feel a bit limited, the movement and jumping around with Midna as Wolf Link is a blast, being able to jump from branch to branch in a big tree or through a collapsed tower is really cool. And I also really like the design of Wolf Link. They did a really good job of capturing aspects of Link's physicality and translating it to a wolf, which is not something you'd really think would be done in a Zelda game. Also, his coloration's really cool. And also, Twilight Princess HD, when it first was released on the Wii U, came with the Wolf Link amiibo, and it's one of the coolest and most well-designed and executed amiibo that you can get. And also, the Wolf Link amiibo unlocks the Cave of Shadows, which is a gauntlet of enemies to fight, where you can eventually win some money and other cool stuff. And it's fun because the combat is fun, but... It does feel a bit tacked on, which makes sense considering you can only really access it with the amiibo. Twilight Princess also has some of the coolest boss fights in the franchise, like the fights with Argorok, Star-Lord, Zant, and the final fights with Ganon. Zant is one of the most fun villains in the franchise because he's a great representation of the pettiness of evil, and I love just how childish he is whenever his plans start to unravel. It just adds some interesting dynamics to him that helps him stand out amongst the other antagonists in the Zelda games. Also, fighting Argorok and Star-Lord just have an epic weight to them, and just do a great job of showing off the scale of their designs and how big they are. It's ridiculous. And fighting Ganon in Hyrule Castle and Ganondorf out in Hyrule Field are some of the coolest moments in the franchise. However, regardless of how awesome these boss fights are, I really didn't enjoy the actual dungeons leading up to those fights as much as I did in the other 3D Zelda games. Also, it got to a point where I wish there was more time between dungeons. It just felt a bit too compact for me because there wasn't really much to do in the overworld that was all that compelling or fun to me. And that's because my favorite parts of Zelda games are exploring the overworld and the quests and memorable characters you find in the world. Twilight Princess is just really lacking in those places for me. The Bug Princess Agatha and Minna is also really fun, and they're both so interesting. But aside from that, there aren't really a whole lot of characters I found all that memorable or fun. The overworld it also feels largely dead and empty, and that makes sense from a narrative perspective whenever the world is covered in Twilight, but that doesn't make those parts of the world fun or interesting to me. And even whenever you clear the twilight in the areas, like, they just don't really fill out that much. It just feels like a lot of pointless empty space. The quests are also typically less interesting to me than they were in Majora's Mask. And the ones that are there just don't really give me a lot of fun because they just go on too long and drag. The side quests in The Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time just didn't have that same problem of overstaying their welcome to me. All the bug and poke collecting just wasn't as fun as the gold sculptures in Ocarina of Time because those felt like fun extras while you were already exploring the world. Whereas the bug collecting and the Poe collecting and Twilight Princess just feels like busy work. The HD remaster does clear up the blurry visuals from the GameCube and the Wii versions of the game. However, the sharper visuals just further illustrate how dated the graphics are and because they decided to use really muted colors, the art style just doesn't make up for the dated graphics. To me, they tried too hard to find a middle ground between stylization and realistic graphics, and they just kind of failed on both fronts for me. Also, I just don't really like how people's faces look in this game. 
They just often look really weird, and the general design of people just doesn't really do it for me. And it's also kind of funny how people praise this game for being much darker and mature than The Wind Waker, and yet your first mini-boss is a baboon where you're smacking its butt with your sword to damage it. It kind of takes the darkness and maturity away from the game for the first chunk of it. Also, this rendition of Zelda is a bit boring to me because she never really does anything or really emote at all. She just kind of blandly mopes around Hyrule Castle for the game. All of those features make the Wii U version easily the best version of this game to play. And that's an easy recommendation to make if you've played the GameCube release, or you haven't played the game in a long time, or if it's your first time ever playing Twilight Princess. But if you're used to the Wii release of this game, and you know it really well, playing this HD remaster will be confusing to play, because on Wii, it was flipped so the motion controls wouldn't confuse right-handed players. Apparently Nintendo thought that these motion controls would make it difficult for right-handed players to control Link as he is traditionally left-handed. And because of that, that makes it really disorientating to switch between the Wii version and any other version of Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess HD, or really any other version of this game, is a bit frustrating to me because it is such a fantastic game for the reasons I mentioned, like many of the boss fights and the music, but but those problems I mentioned, they just really stick out to me because of what I personally look for in Zelda games. It's such a great game, but those problems just keep me from being able to really enjoy this game as much as other Zelda fans do, and keeps me from being able to connect with it like other fans have. That doesn't mean I don't recommend this game, I recommend this game highly. In fact, chances are you might like this game and connect with it more than I did, but still, it's a great game, and I think anyone that has an interest in Zelda games should at least give this one a shot, if not any other 3D Zeldas. But personally, it just doesn't have the same personal attachment to me as The Wind Waker or any of the other 3D Zeldas, really. But regardless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Memory Card, where we're continuing Zelda Month throughout the rest of November.